Coming up next on The Jeff Crilly Show, millennials are known to job hop. They'll be at one job for two years, and that may seem like a long time to them. On this episode, we'll be talking to my personal priest, Father Tom Clorty. He's retiring after 47 years in the priesthood. That's next. Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. Reporting live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Crilly, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team. And the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is The Jeff Crilly Show. Well, it's not often that I'm starstruck on this show, but I'm starstruck today because my personal priest, Father Tom Clorty, good friend, uh, is retiring after 47 years in the priesthood, and I've invited him uh, to a This Is Your Life segment. Uh, Father Tom, thank you for making time for us. Oh, gladly. Well worth it. Well, Thanks, Jeff. You and I had the pleasure uh, of going out to dinner uh, shortly after you announced your retirement, and you told such vivid stories about the early days and meeting the Pope that I, I, I just had to share some of your stories with, with my audience. Let's start with the early days. So uh, when did you get the calling? It was kind of a split shift. Uh, the April of my eighth grade year, uh, we have the Sacrament of Reconciliation known as or Confession. Uh, and that was the day where it was all screened. There was no face-to-face -face opportunity. And when I finished my confession, the uh, confessor just said, well, young man, have you ever th uh, thought about a vocation of the priesthood? Sometimes we priests feel we're clairvoyant, and I feel that for you. And it's like, well, I kind of, I have been taught by nuns in every, almost every class. So they always told you, think about boys, think about being a priest, girls, think about being a nun, and, and on with whatever the subject was. And so I told them I didn't think that was for me. Flash forward four years to Jesuit High School, uh, April of my senior year there. Same church, same confessional, uh, a different priest. He ends my confession with, you know, young man, sometimes we priests feel we're clairvoyant. Have you ever thought about a vocation to the priesthood? And that just stuck with me. The word clairvoyant is not one you hear too often in conversation. And so I mentioned that to him, what happened four years ago, ex almost exactly, and in the same church and confessional. And so he says, well, let's visit at some point another time. So I made arrangements to work with him, visit with him later. Uh, then um, talked with, he put me in touch with the vocation director for the diocese. Uh, uh, and so I, I had a lot to think about because I had been accepted at Georgetown for the Foreign Service School for the Diplomatic Corps, the government, and had that in mind. And then this comes up and it's like, ooh, now what do I do? And so after conversations, they determined that basically the core curriculum of both Georgetown and the University of Dallas, where our Holy Trinity Seminary is located, would be pretty comparable. So I wouldn't lose anything that way, lose credits or course hours. Um, so I went through that. And then um, my sophomore year, I realized, ooh, now I have to make a decision because, and I still wasn't sure that the seminary was for me or priesthood was for me. So. I asked if I could major in history, which had never been done before. So I got permission to do that, uh, major both in history and philosophy with a minor in psychology. Then my senior year, I realized things had kind of flown my way and flowed my way, uh, but I still had made a decision. And so I thought I'm going to give it one more year. And I guess it's obvious which way I went now. Uh, eight years of formation in the seminary and 47 years of ministry. And it's been a blessing. Wow. We've got a, a early picture of you holding your first mass and your mom and dad are in the front row. That had to be such an honor for them. Uh, I think, well, for them and as well for me, my mom and dad were just very religious people. Uh, they prayed, well, three rosaries a day, uh, usually went to daily mass. Of course, always Sunday mass as a family. But they were very supportive. If I wanted to go into the diplomatic corps, that was fine. If I wanted to go into the seminary, they never pressed the issue. They were just said, you know, whatever you want, we'll support you with. And that gave me a lot of freedom to make, I think, the right decision. 
Yes. Well, uh, you've probably done thousands and thousands of weddings, funerals, baptisms. You've been with families uh, during the happiest of times and the, and the worst of times. Uh, what is that like to have that kind of intimacy with so many families? Those are privileged moments uh, that families allow you into. When you think of a wedding, you know, that you get to know the couple and their family. Uh, same for a baptism. Uh, and even with moments of funerals, uh, especially if you've known the person who died, much less have a chance to know their family. Those are pri privileged moments. There's a French Dominican, I want to say 17th or 18th century, Lacordaire, and he said, uh, part of the privilege of being a priest is you are a member of every family yet belonging to none. And that's so true. You don't have your own family, but so many families have invited you into their family and those special moments uh, of happiness and sadness and everything in between. Well, you've uh, married so many couples, you probably don't remember all of them. Is there any one couple that stands out in your mind? Any, anyone whose name rhymes with Krilly? Uh, it'll come to me in a moment, but yes. Oh, that was a delight. That was when I was at All Saints, uh, and uh, that was uh, just a delight. I mean, I was really very nervous because it wasn't just the two of you. It was so many of your news anchor yes, friends, and here I am, a, a public speaker, and, and, and they are probably even more, far more professional than I am, so trying not to blow it in those moments uh, over and above just maintaining the ritual, but that was certainly a delight to, uh, with the both of you uh, to have that opportunity. Well, you're such a, a wonderful guy. It was a blessing to, to, to be uh, wedded by you. Um, you talked about being starstruck by the local anchors here in Dallas. <laughs> yes. You've had a chance to meet uh, several popes. Yes. Tell us what that's uh, like. Early on, I had a chance to be, well, in the presence of Paul VI. Uh, that was 1968. Um, and then three times I've had the opportunity to meet uh, Pope, well, now Saint Pope John Paul the, the II. Uh, and the last time I met him was uh, 1989. And uh, it was a one-on-one -on -one audience. The others, I was part of a general audience, and you shake hands, and he moves along. This one was just, well, he and I and his secretary. And uh, it was like, oh, my gosh, uh, trying to make sure I could maintain my composure and some sense of sanity, uh, meeting this very holy man, uh, it, well known for that already, much less later in his life, but the head of the Catholic Church, my ultimate boss, so to speak, over and above God. Uh, you know, that was just uh, talk about awesome and awestruck. Uh, was an incredible opportunity. He was very gracious. Uh, uh, it was two years after he had made his tour to the Southwest in San Antonio, and I had helped to organize that on behalf of the diocese. So uh, got to meet him in a small little audience there, but he recalled it instantly, uh, the meeting uh, with the clergy at the Cathedral San Fernando and the like, uh, just instant clarity and just ever so gracious. Uh, so most of our conversation was re uh, regarding his visit then. and. Uh, then he ends with a blessing and then gives you a, a rosary that he's blessed. Uh, so that's still a treasured memento from a, a, a saint. Wow. Let's talk about COVID because, uh, you know, there mm. wasn't a handbook for that uh, at any diocese. Uh, how did you guys handle COVID? Yes, I think, well, like anybody that hit us unawares and totally unprepared, uh, I am very grateful to my assistant then, Father Stephen, who was very tech-oriented so that we could, as a parish community, get our liturgies live-streamed. Uh, so, uh, you know, but in the first days, you were, uh, at least in Texas, you were only allowed 10 people, including the ministers of the altar. So we had a cameraman, uh, our, our, our cantor, our organist, uh, um, myself, Father Stephen, uh, an acolyte, so, and that was about it, and it was so weird offering mass where we'd normally offer it for 1,100 people at a time, five times on a Sunday, now doing it only for 10 people in our church seats that many. And so to address an empty church was, uh, it took a while to get used to being able to do that so it would come across to those who were watching on screen. 
and on television that you know you weren't that much affected by it but it was it was hard to kind of build up energy because you work off the energy of those yes. who are present and not having that opportunity that much uh, it took a while getting used to and much less trying to minister uh, we were uh, very limited and restricted even visiting the hospitals uh, for a while, we weren't allowed in unless a person was actually dying. So you couldn't make your general rounds of those who were sick and uh, and uh, and incapacitated. Uh, so it just affected so many ways. And then hearing the stories of so many families that were not able to be with their loved ones in their last moments of life, uh, and then when it was still under great restrictions, uh, family members had to choose who could be present for the funeral. Uh, you know, and that had to be a hard thing. Uh, here's a funeral of a loved one, and it's a family of any size. They had to choose, okay, you can be present, you can't. So mm. it was a very difficult thing. It was a very hard thing. But there again, just watching the people's reactions and trying to journey with them uh, through those different moments of trial and tribulation. And so the decision to retire, tell us about that. It was, um, I had had um, hip replacement surgery, but before that, I was only sleeping oh, a couple hours a night because every move was kind of painful. And I realized that was taking a toll on me and then trying to keep a full day the next day. And so in visiting with the bishop, just then uh, that reaching that decision of after 47 years, I had hoped to go 50 and I'm still helping out a bit in different uh, parishes on weekends, but I don't have all the administrative duties. So I'm privileged that and happy that I'm able to continue to serve uh, you know, uh, where it really counts in the sacraments with the people uh, for communions, masses, confessions, the like. Uh, but at least with the administrative duties, that gives me a little bit more breathing time to enjoy what years God will permit me. And uh, you're not truly retired because you mentioned to me that you're off to Corsicana today. Yeah, to help hear confessions there. So it's a delight to still feel needed and wanted and used in the best sense of that word. I know one of the projects you're most proud of is the building campaign, and we're going to put some pictures and video up on the screen. Tell us oh, about yeah. that. Uh, this is at my, well, now former parish of Prince of Peace. Uh, we had set five major goals at our 25th anniversary, and one of them uh, was regarding updating the facilities. So we have worked for that. Uh, as of the day I retired, we had raised uh, by about 700 people, $16.5 million. Uh, towards renovating our church, adding a chapel, uh, doing some revisions and renovations to the school, uh, additions there, uh, a welcome center, an event center. Uh, so I'm, I felt like I left it in very good hands and certainly knowing my successor will, and all the, the committees that have worked with me will continue to work with him to bring that about. Probably, probably about a three year project because it's quite a scope of our campus. Well, one of the things I'm going to miss most about Father Tom is his sense of humor, because I, I remember something that you said just a, a couple Sundays ago. You said, the good news is we have the money. The bad <laughs> news is... <laughs> It's in your pockets. <laughs> so, so getting it out of your pockets will help us a lot. Absolutely. And, I, and I'll steal one of the, your lines that you use all the time. I'm sitting at the right hand of the Father. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, Father Tom has these Father Tomisms that are just uh, so adorable. Well, final thoughts before we, we leave. One, just thank you for this opportunity. But two, I'm just very grateful to God and, and God's people that have been so beautifully reflective of the life of faith and hope and love uh, in all the different assignments that I've had. You know, there's days that you could live without, like all of us, but thanks be to God, they have been far, far more overshadowed by blessed days that uh, rejoice in being a minister of the Lord. Wow. Well, um Father Tom, if he if he's touched your life in some way or another, please leave comments uh, down below this video. Uh, we're going to end by putting up the website. It's popplano.org. That's Prince of Peace Plano.org forward slash building campaign. Father Tom, thank you so much for your service and your friendship. Thank you for both as well. Appreciate that, Jeff. You bet. God bless you. That's it for now. We'll see you next time.